with some weaving in events. Now weaving in ends is a the bane of many knitters existence and I confess it's not one of my favorite things either. One of my biggest concerns and fears is always how will I make sure I get it secure enough? Have I woven it in well enough? How do I make sure it's not seen so that the, the seam is clean? Etc. And a lot of it, the truth is a lot of that is just practice. So, just looking at this um, simple elegance cowl, I've got two ends that I need to weave in. And I want to try, one of the things I want to try to do as I'm finishing is to try to have the seam be as, as neat, have the weaving in of ends, I mean, be as neat as possible. So I've got this nice edge and I want to try to maintain it. So I'm going to start by just finding a spot that looks good. Let's just go through here first. And a lot of weaving in ends is just checking and seeing how things look. And that looks okay. And it's also about going through enough to secure the end. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of just going through a spot. And now before I pull this all the way through, what I'm going to do is check and see what it looks like on the other side. Now if I can see my knitting, ne my darning needle through there, then that's probably not, it's probably going to be a little unsightly or I might see a little bit of that yarn. And this is a pretty short end to be weaving in. And I don't mind that because I realize that I can, um, one of the tricks, if you have a particularly short end, is using your needle and you can just weave your needle through the stitches that you want to weave through. And you can see how I'm just doing this. And every once in a while I will split apply just because I think that makes it just a little more secure and it hides a little better. So as I'm going through there, then I'll look onto the front. So this is what it, so I've woven my needle in and this is what it looks like on this side. Then I'm going to turn it over and see, can I see my needle through there? And I can a little, but not very much. And that's what I want. So now I can take this end and I can put it through my the eye of my darning needle, tapestry needle. They're kind of used, those two terms are kind of used interchangeably. And then I'll just run it through like that. Now because this is kind of a stretchy one, I want to stretch it and see what that does. And it still looks, that looks pretty well hidden to me. So I think I'm going to be happy with that. Double check the front again and yep, I don't really see anything there. So because this is a stretchy fabric and a stretchy cowl, I want to double check and make sure that my ends are being woven in nicely enough that it's not um, tightening the fabric and pulling on it. So now I'm going to go back through the other direction and because this was a short enough end, I'm going to try to get it so that it is coming back through the other direction, just to secure it a little bit. Again, flipping it over and checking 
to see what it looks like on the other side. I think that looks okay. It'd be nice if there was a perfect way to weave in ends. Sometimes you're going to get lucky and you're going to have a um, I-cord edging or something like that that you can just run your seams up through. Sometimes it's a little more challenging to weave in ends so that they're hidden. Okay, so that one's done. Now, there are two, before I clip this in, end, I'm going to talk to you about this. There are a couple of um, ways that people will weave in their ends. They'll weave in an end, then they'll clip that end right there. They'll weave in all of their ends and then go through the garment and clip all of the ends. Um, whichever way you choose is fine. I would say just be consistent. Um, one of the worst <laughs> knitting tragedies, well not the worst, but it was a, a definitely a painful one was when I had a when I had a end and I had wove in one side, not the other, and just went clip, clip, and had to tink back and undo my weaving in. And anyway, I saved it, but it was a challenge. So I'm going to cut this just a tiny bit long. Make sure I get all the plies there. Now, as I do that, and one of the reasons I want to do that is so that I pull it a little bit and then that end, that little bit of an end has just completely disappeared. All right. Now, different fabrics and different um, fiber content are going to change the rules a little bit sometimes. Uh, this is a 50-50 uh, merino silk. So this is going to be pretty simple. Now, because I've got two ends at the same place, I'm going to try to send this, this end, a little bit different direction. Since this one went up this way, I'm going to try to go up this side and go in this side of the fabric because we already have an end over here on on this side and I don't want it to get too thick. So I'm going to try to send it to this side of our seam. Again, I'm going to see what that looks like on the edge. I'm going to come back through here first. Yes, I'm happier with that. And then come across here to the front, to the back again to get started. And so come across here and through. And now. Again, I'm going to see what this looks like, kind of get it started, just weaving through. Since this is a double moss stitch, I have a little bit more um, flexibility with where I can go. Now, that's going to leave a little bit of a line right there because I have that big spot that I can see my needle. But let's flip it over to the other side and see. That looks pretty nice. So, I'm going to go ahead and run this through anyway. And because of our yarn, that that looked like a big spot is now very nicely hidden and we can't see it. So let's keep going. And this tail is very, very long. 
So you got to see some of the techniques for a short analog. And I'm going to kind of go through here. And again, it's just about what you're happy with and what you're comfortable with. How long do I need to weave in ends? I've, I get asked quite a bit. Well, as long as, until you feel like it's secure and that it's not going to come out. Well, how long is that? Depends on how, um, what the garment's going to be used for, what its purpose is, where you're weaving in the end, how aggressively it's going to be worn. A heavy duty garment is going to need more weaving in than um, a really light lacy shawl, perhaps. And at the same time, a and I'll just double check really quickly. Yep. Very nice and clean. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. And I understand I'm talking while I'm doing this. But really, it's just about finding the spaces. And I'm trying to let you see as much as possible where I'm going and how I'm making this work. But it really is as easy as just individual stitches. Kind of right now, I'm going in and out. Now, again, in, back to individual preferences and a, and a garment that is 100% um, wool, you're going to be able to felt the ends a little bit. And that's another technique you can even use. And you can leave them shorter and split the plies and then they'll felt in a lot more nicely. Okay, so now I've gone about several inches from the edge. And let's see, as I'm stretching it this way, I'm noticing that some of my end weaving in is bubbling a little bit. I don't know if you can see that when you're, see that in the camera. I think you can a little bit. So what I'm going to do is leave it have it at a stretched out point and then I'm just going to go back the other direction a little bit to kind of keep this in place. Again, there's those three stitches. Let's just check on the front. Yep, that's not going to be able to be seen. So we'll pull this through. Through up like this. Okay. Yep. That looks good. Maybe one more stitch. I tend to be, as you see, I went that far and then I'm coming back a little bit. I tend to be a little bit more of a overachiever as far as weaving in ends goes. So in this case, I'm just kind of headed up under the purl stitches before I pull that all the way through. Double check on the other side and it looks good. Again, like before, I'm going to snip this end off with a little bit of the tail poking out. There we go. Now you can see it. Which disappears right back in as I stretch it up. Okay? This one this one's done. Simple elegance cowl, shorter version of the simple elegance cowl is done. I hope you found value in this tutorial. If you have, please consider a one-time payment via PayPal or a regular subscription via Patreon. The links are down below and they are on the screen. Again, thank you for joining me. See you next time.